the importance of having a hardworking man, of course, and having, you know, a man who's actually going to be there, who's in the home, like that really shaped my view on relationships to the fact that like my current boyfriend, his birthday is probably like five days away from my dad and everybody says they act just alike. And so, yeah, like it just made me kind of break that bad boy kind of thing I went through. It's just like, no, I really want somebody that's real um somebody that's dependable because if i call my dad at 3 a.m he's going to answer the phone mm -hmm. just to say for like if i call my man at 3 a.m he should be able to answer the phone he is going to answer the phone so yeah. it just made me just like kind of pull back in of like what's important when it comes to dating what's up brave hearts community this is sean heineman your premier pre-engagement coach back with another segment of a scary to remarry wanting you to love fearlessly we are working a new series, the Father's Day series, A Daughter's Perspective. This is going to be a four to possibly five part series, depending on how far we going into this, but it's going to be in a, a phenomenal episode. I have today's guest with me. You are in for a treat. Today's guest is originally from Memphis, Tennessee, now resides in Nashville. Uh, she's also an entertainment and lifestyle publicist. She created her, her agency, Legacy 31, in 2018 with the mission to help create voices for minorities in entertainment. I love that. Dedicated to shaping compelling narratives and enhancing brands through strategic public relations, she specializes in amplifying voices and stories that resonate with diverse audiences. Outside of her professional endeavors, she has a passion for uh, mentoring high school students and advocating for mental health and self-love. In her leisure time, she enjoys journaling, painting, tending to her garden, and immersing herself in the pages of captivating books, Bravehearts Community. Let's show some love to Amber Renee. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. How are you? And first of all, thank you for having me today. For sure. A quick backstory. I had a, a tweet, I, I, well, X, whatever you want to call it. Uh -huh. I talked about the whole Father's Day, you know, how many daddy's girls we have. Right. And it went crazy. I think it almost had like 30,000 something. I bet. <laughs> yeah, it went crazy. And I seen your response. And I uh -huh. know we was talking about connecting before, but I'm mm -hmm. glad that we we're actually able to make this happen. Right. Such a powerful uh, segment. Yes. Uh, yeah. So you are a daddy's girl. I am like my dad is like my best friend and I I'm like I hope I don't get emotional because like when I talk about my dad I'd be like I sometimes cry because like he's such a good person he's been like so instrumental in my life mm -hmm. that it's just like I'm truly blessed yes yes mm -hmm. it's a blessing because I want to we're doing this series I wanted to destroy the narrative of you know, absent dads and right. fathers not there and black men don't take care of it, all that stuff, right. you know, and I know there is true in some demographics and some, you know, places I, I it's true, but for the most part, I want to share some light on some positivity. So can you share a special memory you have with your, with your father? Um, I think, for, okay, so career day. So, you mm -hmm. know, like in elementary school, you have career day and things like that. Mm hmm so, like, I had to ask my dad to come to career day, but I didn't, like, tell him that that meant, like, he would have to, like, set up his own little table and, like, you know, talk about his career, but as an engineer. And so mm -hmm. he thought he was just going to have to come and walk around with me. And so when he gets there, like, you know, all the other parents, they have, like, their brochures, they have, like, the pens, the pencils, like, this whole big layout. And he was like, Amber... You didn't tell me that, like, I had to have my own stuff. I thought I just, like, you know, came and walked around with you. He was like, I don't have no pens, no pencils to give out. And so then, like, the kids, they come up to me and ask me him questions. And he's just, like, he's trying to answer them. But he was just like, I wish you would have, like, prepared me for this. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I know. He probably was like, what? Yeah, he was just like, okay, only Amber. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy's girl. Yeah. <laughs> How... uh how has your relationship with your father evolved over the years from being, you know, baby Amber to today? Like, how has that relationship evolved? Are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. 
this is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. Um, I think it's getting more personal because mm. I think when you're a child, there is that parent child kind of balance. Mm. Um, for me on my dad's side, my dad once was divorced with, you know, two, I have two little brothers. And so I kind of was like, when I moved my dad, I kind of was like, you know, proxy mom a little bit. And so like, I kind of was like, you know, mom, sister. So like my dad kind of made me privy to more things. I would say now being an adult, um, that's my best friend. Like I can, there's nothing I can't tell my dad. Mm -hmm. I can talk to him about friendships. I can talk to him about relationships. I can talk to him about career. Um, and what I love the most is, is that my dad, he still finds a way to like get on my level. Um, like I'm very spiritual, like manifesting and crystals and higher self. And my dad called me one day, like I was worried about my business one day. My dad called me, he was like, you know, like I've been, you know, studying manifestations and stuff like that. And you need to meditate and you need to do this. And so I would say like the older I've gotten was like, he's gotten more on my levels, more personal with me, but he's opened a line where like, that's truly like, we can be friends. And it's not like weird. Like that's like my dad friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Yeah, because when you know you're younger, it's like they just yeah. kind of show you the ropes, you know. It's like gotta uh, be like discipline. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, you know, the, the more structured and the more disciplined you become, that that bond becomes closer. Right. Yeah, totally understand. Uh what life lessons has your father taught you that you still carry today? Huh. How do how what does he say? <laughs> How to, it's, it's how you say it. make your plan and work your plan mm. and so I always make a plan because like my dad is really into his career um his children we are all into like school career I'm the only one that's decided to be an entrepreneur but my dad always tells me to like make your plan work your plan whether that be your career whether you want to lose 10 pounds or whether you want to get a new car like make your plan and work it and once you work it you can get to it mm-hmm mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting how we remember those little small things, you know? Right, <laughs> right. And that's something he still tells me to this day. Like when I like, I'm like, I don't know if I could do this. He'd be like, make your plan to work your plan. That's that's all you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Those things you carry with you throughout your life. And then the funny thing about it is, it's like it actually manifests in your life, right? You're like, all right, my dad said. <laughs> right. <laughs> To yeah. make this plan, so I'm gonna sit down with some notebook and paper. I'm gonna make this plan and then work it out. Mm -hmm. Love mm -hmm. it, love it. So, what qualities do you admire the most about your dad? I would say my dad is probably the hardest working man I know, mm. and I admire that um, because when I was looking for a significant other. I would say during my college years, early adult years, like the men weren't just working like that. Mm. And my dad, he will work seven days a week. If we say we need something, he will go do that. And it just made me like, it made me the hard worker I am today. Mm. But just to see that, like, he really cares about providing for his family and making sure all of us are like taken care of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you share a time when your father supported you during a challenging moment in your life? I feel like that's every moment. 
Um, <laughs> leave this moment. Um, I, I would say the I I want to say like probably one of the most um recent moments would be probably 2020. We were in the midst of COVID, and I had an atopic pregnancy, mm. and. My parents are in Memphis. I live in Nashville. So I was already like in Nashville by myself. And so my mom came to Nashville to take me to Memphis. And so I eventually went to my dad's house. And like the moment I got out the car, my dad was standing at the stairwell waiting to hug me. And he was like, so what do you want for dinner? Like, you want hot wings? Like, hot wings are my favorite. He's like, you want hot wings? You want pizza? Like, whatever you want, you know, you're good. And so like, from just that whole situation, like he was there. My birthday was like two weeks later, still made sure I had a good birthday, just all of that. Like, but throughout, like, you know, wanting to talk about it, like, you know, needing guy advice for how to get through an atopic pregnancy with like, you know, a significant other. Um, my dad was like, when I called him, he was there, gave me good advice. Like, you know, men emotions and women emotions, they're different. So you need to do this, you need to do that. So it's like, I really appreciate him for just, you know, like, listening and being caring during that moment in my life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah because i was going to ask you about that like what role has your father played in shaping your views on family and also relationships you know like how how do you see other men you know right yeah i will say um funny you because i have a friend who said like growing up i received princess treatment but when I was in college, I dated like the worst person ever. <laughs> and it was just kind of like, everyone was kind of like, where did this come from? But mm -hmm. I would say when I spent maybe like I spent COVID at home in Memphis and I really wasn't around my dad. I was really around my brothers. And it kind of made me um, reshape my values on relationships. Right. Mm -hmm. And I saw how, you know, important family time is. I saw how important it is, you know, to take the time to pray. Like there'd be times that my dad would be, my dad's in Memphis. I'm in Nashville. There's been time that my dad called me like, okay, we're going to have a family prayer right now. And I'd be like, mm -hmm. huh, I don't want to do that, but you know, y'all on the phone. So we're going to do that anyway. Um, the importance of having a hardworking man, of course, and having, you know, a man who's actually going to be there, who's in the home, like that really shaped my view on relationships to the fact that like my current boyfriend, mm -hmm. his birthday is probably like five days away from my dad. And everybody says they act just alike. And so, yeah, like it just made me kind of break that bad boy kind of thing I went through. It's just like, no, I really want somebody that's real. Um, somebody that's dependable because if I call my dad at 3 a.m., he's gonna answer the phone. Mm -hmm. Just the same for like if I call my man at 3 a.m., he should be able to answer the phone. He is gonna answer the phone. So mm -hmm. it just made me just like kind of pull back in of like what's important when it comes to dating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At what stage in your life did you get rid of like the the, the bad boy because it seemed like a lot of women go through this <laughs> stage like <what? laughs> how, how do you here. break that? yeah i'm gonna be honest it didn't and really until 27 um college 18 19 because it was like you know you're dating you're like okay but you're i think when you're younger you're dating like maybe not who that person, who you want that person to be, you know, mm -hmm. like you're not really dating, you're kind of experiencing that person. Mm -hmm. Um, It took me to like my mid twenties to kind of break that. Okay. This is not working. Like I need some kind of consistency in my life. I need somebody that's dependable, but it took, I mean, it took seven to nine years to get there. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause this thing like a lot of ladies, they go through that. They like, I was, you know, yeah. <laughs> Just right off to being young. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like you gotta uh yeah, mm -hmm. uh if your dad is watching this, what what would you say to him right now? I would say thank you for always being there for me. Um, thank you for always loving me. My dad has always told me as long as you have one parent, you know looking after you, you're going to be good. And so thank you for just always making sure the family's good, keeping us together, even though like everybody's older now, we might not want to do family vacations and things like that, but just always thank you for making sure that we always know that home is base. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love it. 
And describe your dad in one word. Funny. I would say funny. My dad is so goofy and so funny. Like, he's just always making someone laugh. Like, me and my little brother, we can sit and laugh with him all day long. But he is he is hilarious. Mm, mm-hmm. that's a great trait to have. So is, is your significant other, does he have a sense of humor? Yes. He does. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful thing. This uh, has definitely been a, a phenomenal episode. I, you know, again, wanted to get some of the, the 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 daughters and just talk about dad. You know, I always wanted this to be a safe, safe, vulnerable spot for uh, men and women, um, mm -hmm. especially with this series. Can you let everyone know all the good stuff that you have going on? How can we get in touch with you? All the other good stuff. Okay, so right now I am working on rebranding my leg is my public relations agency, Legacy 31 PR. And so you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Legacy 31 PR, and my personal page on Facebook, Amber, Amber Renee Johnson, and Instagram, Amberly Life. Mm, okay, awesome. Well, I will have everything linked up in the description below. You heard it here, Brave Hearts Community. So make sure you show, show some support.